Hi everyone, I'm going to be running through some hints and tips from the creative department here at King James in terms of putting together award packages for the bookmarks. This will cover doing the case studies, uh, putting together the results you need and a quick look at some of the entry boards we've done in the past. To help set the scene for this, I'm gonna share one of our case studies from last year, this was a gold winner in social communities, and this was for Time Bank. So I'll play the case study, uh, show some of the entry boards, and then I'll talk a little bit about some of the hints and tips behind this. Miss me? Are you serious? I actually did it myself. Yeah. Nice. nice. And this is the entry board we put together. Um, I chose social communities because of the entries we did last year, I felt this one makes a nice example because we're putting together, we don't have lots of film assets to put together, to, to put an entry together. We're having to tell the story of social posts. Some of these are just tweets. So this is sometimes more challenging than when you have like beautiful film pieces that you can edit together. So I think the main thing that you, you'll see in these case studies, and, and I'll talk about this a bit more, is we're just trying to get the personality of the work that we did through in the case studies. So we're trying to tell the story as simply as we can, but we're also trying to communicate the, the personality of the campaign that we did, uh, whether we're putting it into the board itself or the case study, it reflects the work that we did. We're also trying to keep the story simple and clear and pick the things which are gonna help the judges give it the best award they can. And results are really important. So, I mean, I think most people know this by now about bookmarks, but uh, in most categories, results are critical to getting strong awards and being able to prove the, that you have the right metrics to back up that it was successful, that go beyond just engagement metrics and into business results is important. So as you can see in our results board that we did, the acquisition of new customers was absolutely key to the work we're doing, particularly as Time Bank's still relatively new on the scene. Um, so you can see the acquisition is clearly flagged here. And we've also clearly flagged what our media budget was for this work. So we're not just giving out figures with no context of the budget that went into getting them. So here are some hints and tips which you could apply to to any award uh, case study that you're putting together. I'll refer back to Time Bank a little bit as we go through this, but the first thing is really deciding what to enter. We really uh, try to may, make this, um, have quite good filters around what we enter. 
Because to do an award properly, it takes time, it takes resources. If you spread yourself too thin, doing too many award case studies, the likelihood is that all of them will be average and the really good ones won't get their time to shine. So my first tip is only enter the good stuff. And I think you do that by just being really honest with yourself. If you were a judge, if you hadn't put the blood, sweat and tears into this yourself, what would you give this work? Would this be a bronze? Would it be a silver? How would you look at the results that it gave? I think you have to be honest and try to put yourself in a, in a new, neutral party's view of the campaign. It also helps to go to other people, other people in the agency that maybe didn't work on this work, that have done judging of award shows before, and ask them to give you an opinion. And if you're starting to feel, you know, this is maybe a bronze at best, I don't know. Should you be entering that piece of work? A uh, piece of general advice for people that are regularly putting case studies together is become a case study nerd. You can learn a lot just by looking at the ones that are doing really well. Maybe. I try to look through the case studies that have been put together for most of the gold winners that can or the big, big award shows and just try and break down how are they telling these stories you know, I think there's nothing wrong with shamelessly stealing the format of something that fits the style of Tory story you're trying to tell. You know, they have obviously got something right in that format if they've gone on to win big, beyond just having a great idea. Obviously, you still need a great idea as well. But the, a case study is an art form, like any piece of work, you get better at it over time. So um, going off and studying the best, I think really helps you bring that to your own work. Next is assemble your team. I, over the years, I lost track of the number of times. I feel like there's only one or two people left on a specific case study, usually lazy and I, putting things together, wondering where everybody else is and needing something. So I think you need to assemble your team. Anyone that wants their name on the credits, anybody that's gonna be upset if they're not mentioned on the award credits, they're your team for this case study. Congrats to them, they're part of the posse. They need to get uh, together, you need to divide work across them, help gather resources, give everybody a useful role so everybody can participate. So that if it goes on to win, you know, they've all earned and justified their credit on this piece of work. And then the next, uh, once you've agreed that you're gonna enter something, you've got your team, the next step is to really figure out what is the story of this piece of work. And I refer back quite often to story structures. And the hero's journey is arguably the most famous story structure. If you haven't come across it, you know, think of like a big successful piece of me media entertainment. Think of Game of Thrones, think of The Hobbit, think of um, think of anything with like a, any Hollywood movie, movie, pretty much. It's probably following the hero's journey story structure. It's a bit nerdy, but let's get into it a little bit more and you can see how this could apply to a case study. Because this is really about asking yourself what the story is and helping to organize a story. So in the hero's journey, there's always an adventure that you're going on. There's a, an inciting incident that takes you on an adventure. So you have to ask yourself, why did the brand go on an adventure? And where did they start? What was the thing that needed to change? Nothing needed to change, you didn't need the campaign. So something was happening um, that required this campaign to exist. And then what happens when you launch? Like you put all of this work into a launch, but you know, putting it live, as soon as it goes live, you almost lose control of it a little bit. What was the immediate reaction? Did it start to spill out across social media? Did you, unusual things happen? Did it get broken on the news? Was there a moment where suddenly things started to happen. And what was hard, like every good story has uh, conflict and obstacles in it. So what was hard about this campaign? What did you have to overcome to get this campaign to be successful? I usually find in most campaigns, there's a moment where you go, okay, this is really working. Um, I can think of a campaign we did for Stay Free with a bot on it where I had the bot connected to my phone and suddenly at one o'clock in the morning, my phone was swamped with things, with people coming onto the bot. 
um, in their droves. And I just realized, oh, firstly, I have to take this off my phone because the alerts are driving me crazy. But also, this is really something special because we're getting a lot of traction 24 hours a day. You know, most campaigns that will go on to win big probably have that moment in it. And then what's changed for the brand? This is the results, really, but how did things change? How was the brand a changed brand afterwards? How was the world around changed afterwards? Um, here you tie, tie back to why you started, like what you set out to achieve. You need to talk about the results, what you actually achieved, and the two should have some relationship to each other. Next, we do a case study. I don't know how everybody else does this, but over the years, we found the best way to do a case study, to organize it is make a Google Doc that everybody has access to that's on the team. Do, um, do a script, drop it onto the slides, and then start putting potential material onto each part of the script, which you can start to pick the best uh, pieces to go with each part of the script. You know, if you've got a line about how it launched and what it was doing on social media, there might be two or three potential clippings that go with that. Put all three in, and then later you can come back and uh, choose the right one uh, to illustrate the story. Just, uh, we found this as like a nice, easy way to, to work a storyboard. I think one of the things we got wrong in the early days is, reali is, is, is realizing it's not about sharing everything you did. It's not about like just a list of things that went into the campaign. It's really about telling that story and you can add too much. There can be too much information in these things. It can sometimes feel overwhelming if you try to cram every asset that you had into a two minutes uh, case study plot. So I would think about the story you wanted to tell and think about the pieces of the campaign that best tell that story. And as I said earlier, have some personality. Judges often end up sitting for a day, sometimes two days going through case studies. It can be long and tedious. Case studies that have some personality stand out. Um, particularly if you, if you want to get across how the voice that that campaign had, pulling that voice into the case study itself, as I think we did in that time back case study I showed earlier, um, really helps in that two minute window you've got, just communicate what the campaign was about. So the copy shouldn't just be dry and factual copy of how you put the campaign together. Pull the personality through of the campaign you did into how you're telling the story. I think it's really important to show the reaction. You need to get a sense, not just facts and figures, although that is important, you need to show the results. You need to get a sense of the public reaction to your piece of work. Judges need to feel the impact. You know, that's why many case studies will have news clippings. Like if it was on the evening news, like it says something. You can see that there is a public reaction to this piece of work. It might just be like tweets, which really show this was landed. Or it might be something else, which just shows that there was a public reaction to this work and you can feel significant impact from it. Um, and just to keep hammering this home, if you can't prove the business results, you really have to ask yourself, should you be entering this? Sometimes things can be a beautiful piece of creative, but not do well at bookmarks because they don't have the results. And people, creators are left feeling flat, like they failed in some way. Uh, they may have succeeded in creating a beautiful piece of work. That may go on to win, win really well at other award shows. But in bookmarks with results, uh, if you don't have them, put, the, put it into a craft world rather. But you know, ideally you need to be showing the impact and you need to be showing the results of your case study. And that's just an example back from our time bank case study. We were showing um, the, the metrics we could pull from the platform, such as community growth. We were showing engagement rates, but importantly, we were benchmarking that against um, the rest of the industry. So we could find the benchmarks and say that our Twitter engagement rate is 104 times higher than the banking industry average. That starts to feel like a compelling result behind the word. Um, same on Facebook, and then the business result of customers was absolutely critical to the bank and the most important business result for them. Sometimes this is difficult to get because things can be um, not public 
but not publicly available, or a client doesn't want to release certain data. Sometimes you can work with a client to figure out what you can say publicly that won't release the data that they don't want to release. Often we can find a way around with it by partnering with our clients and explaining what we're trying to do. And uh, can, can you continue on results? It's important to include results, but it's also important not to leave something out where the judge should feel should be wrong. For example, I feel like I've seen case studies where we are talking about a website or talking about an app, and they don't say how many people have gone and used it. That is an awkward fact that most judges can spot as missing, and it is an alarm bell that something is wrong here. You know, it was only a small number. So you may have other results, but you're missing a key fact that really should be there for that piece of work. Judges can sniff these things out. So don't hide the awkward facts. I think, again, ask yourself seriously, if, the, if there is an awkward fact that you don't want to say, how many people did something or how, how much traffic something actually got, should this be an entry, really? I try to keep the results simple, particularly for case study films. You can maybe go into a bit more detail on results docs, but I try to pick three really good results when I'm doing um, a case study film, just to hammer it home. Usually some engagement pieces and definitely a business result, if not you know, one engagement result and two business results, if possible. And I really think doing bookmarks successfully, it's about quality, not quantity of entries. Like I said, you can quickly run yourself by the trying to do lots of entries and not getting any of them right. But you know, two or three really strong um, case studies can dominate, dominate an award show. So it's important if you have two to three really killer pieces of work, make sure that those are really strong entries rather than uh, trying to do 20 entries and doing a poor job. And that's a quick tour of my uh, my tips for doing bookmarks. Um, I hope it's useful for you in getting good results this year. So good luck.